Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to another case on ECG. I am Dr. Wajah Shibir. I have completed my residency in cardiology. This is the ECG which we are going to discuss today. First of all, let me give you a brief history of the patient. This is ECG of a 23 year old lady who presented with history of repeated episodes of palpitations. Now before starting the discussion on this ECG, uh, first of all, pause your videos, note down the findings and diagnosis with yourself so that at the end of the video, you can compare the discussion with your findings and diagnosis. So let's begin the discussion on this ECG. As you know that the first thing which we look at on, a, on an ECG is presence of rhythm. As you can see in the rhythm strip that almost every QRS complex is followed by, is preceded by a P wave. The presence of an upright and prominent P wave before each QRS complex in rhythm strip means that this is a sinus rhythm. Next is heart rate. For heart rate, we select a QRS complex which lies on broad vertical line. And between this QRS complex and next QRS complex, we will calculate the large boxes as 300, 150, 100, 175. This second QRS complex, it lies between 100 and 75, and it is almost around 80 beats per minute. So this is a sinus rhythm with heart rate of around 80 beats per minute. Next step in ECG interpretation is axis. For axis, as you know, we look at lead one and lead AVF. In lead one, the direction of QRS complex is upwards. Similarly, the QRS complex is directed upwards in lead AVF. By rule of thumb, if both lead one and lead AVF have a QRS complex which are directed upwards, it means that the axis is normal. Now moving on to the next step, we can note an important and a striking feature in this ECG is that the PR interval is short. You can see that there is P wave which is immediately followed by a QRS complex. So this is a short PR interval as well as there is a broad QRS complex. And you can see that the QRS complex is more than 120 millisecond in this case. Also the initial portion, the initial portion of QRS complex, it is slurred upward. This initial portion of QRS complex showed, shows upward slurring. The presence of broad QRS complex with initial slurred upward QRS complex is called delta wave. As you know that the presence of a short PR interval and a delta wave in a patient who has history of palpita palpitations, it is very much typical of WPWR Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. Wolf Parkinson White syndrome means that there is a pre there is presence of an accessory pathway between atria and ventricle. In the presence of this accessory pathway, there is a conduction of atrial impulse to ventricle impulse through accessory through AV node as well as accessory pathway. The initial portion of the initial slurred portion of QRS complex is basically due to initial repolarization of ventricular muscle as the impulse from atria crosses over from 
accessory pathway into the ventricle subsequently an, an impulse which is coming from av node and purkinje fibers it depolarizes the ventricle and and results in normal terminal portion of qrs complex this accessory pathway can result into a fatal av reentrant tachycardia especially in cases when there is atrial fibrillation in cases of atrial fibrillation there is rapid transmission of impulses from atria to ventricle through accessory pathway which can result in ventricular fibrillation so in these patients it is necessary to locate the pathway via ep study and do radio frequency ablation to prevent sudden cardiac death although the definite method to diagnose the location of accessory pathway is electrophys electrophysiological study ep study but we can detect this pathway the location of this pathway on surface ecg as well for that we have an a uh, criteria which is called aruda criteria here you can see this is the aruda criteria which has four steps in first step we look at uh, lead 1 if lead 1 has uh, an isoelectric or uh, negative delta wave or the amplitude of r wave is more than s wave in lead v1 it means that the accessory pathway is located in left free valve if this is not the case then we move on to the second step in which we look at lead 2 a delta wave which is negative in lead 2 means that the pathway is either located in coronary sinus or middle cardiac vein if this is not the case then we move on to the third step where we look at the presence of isoelectric or negative delta wave in lead v1 an isoelectric or negative delta wave in v1 means that the pathway is located in septum and then we use the Uh, the direction of qrs complex in lead avf to further locate the pathway in septum whether it is anterior or posterior next and final step is if none of first three is present and there is any other pattern then it means that this is a pathway which is located in right free valve so we so we once once again look at ecg of this patient in first step we look at lead 1 in lead 1 we can find that there is no negative or isoelectric delta wave rather the delta wave is positive in lead 1 similarly the r wave in lead v1 is not more than s wave so this rule rules out the presence of an accessory pathway in left atrial free valve so second step was to look at in lead 2 in lead 2 we cannot find a negative or isoelectric delta wave which rules out the presence of accessory pathway in coronary sinus or middle cardiac vein similarly in lead v1 there is no delta wave present so so the presence of of septal pathway is also ruled out so this brings us to the fourth step which is that if none of the first three are present it means that the pathway is located within the right atrium so 
This is an accessory WPW syndrome with accessory pathway located in right atrium. And it is usually an easier target for EP study as we do not have to cross via transeptal puncture into left atrium for radio frequency ablation. The pathway which is located in right atrium, it is it can be ablated easily. So to sum up the ECG discussion, this is an ECG of a 23 year old lady with sinus rhythm, normal axis. There are there is short PR interval with a delta wave and which, which is suggestive of WPW syndrome and the location of this accessory pathway is, pathway is most likely into the right atrium. So this is all for today. Hopefully you like our video. For more videos, kindly subscribe to this channel and stay tuned.